Sutherland. Join me as we share the success strategies of phenomenal women achieving extraordinary success around the globe. From the good, the bad, the ugly and everything in between, this is Real Talk by Real Women. We share with you the highs and lows of their journey and give you honest insight on how you can navigate same with confidence, integrity and gain a little inspiration. As a leadership strategist, executive coach and business consultant, I have the pleasure of working with organisations and individuals, helping them to turn their goals into success. Hi everyone and thanks for listening to this week's edition of Phenomenal Woman. Before we kick off with this week's interview, I would just love to say thank yous for tuning in once again and ask you yet again to share the show and share the love to those other women out there, either by rating or subscribing on iTunes or whichever platform you listen to. That'd be most appreciated. So that will enable me to share the word and bring more interviews to you every week. Now this week I am interviewing Danielle George-John. She's the owner of Sweet Dreams based in Antigua and Barbuda and since establishing her business in 2010 she has quickly established herself as the premier designer cake resource in Antigua. Taking her design cues from her clients she personally designs and bakes one-of-a-kind masterpieces that truly are works of art. She designed cakes the rich and famous, including the replica of the recently renovated Clarence House, the historical home of King William IV that was reopened by His Royal Highness Prince Henry of Wales, aka Prince Harry. While she creates celebration centrepieces for any occasion, her real love and speciality lies in designing modern, unique and elegant wedding cakes to suit the destination weddings that take place in the Antiguan paradise. So hi, Danielle, and welcome, a big warm welcome to this week's edition of Phenomenal Woman. Now, I would have done a very brief bio uh, at the beginning of the podcast, but you can tell us a lot more and the listeners about yourself and where you come from and your humble beginnings. Okay. Hi. Good day, everybody. Um, Well, I basically am a born Antiguan. Um, My... I guess my father's people came here in the 1800s and my mom is, you know, British and she came here in her twenties and I've lived here my whole life. Um, I did have an opportunity of seeing um, more of a humble upbringing compared to my relatives, uh, a different upbringing. We'll just say that. (laughs) Okay. Okay. I've just always kind of been more of an artsy kind of a person and I love Antigua and, you know, I want to eventually put Antigua on the map for other things that we offer as well, like cakes. <laughs> Excellent. So because, because you, you do actually create some rather beautiful and very artistic. And I have to, that is the word artistic. I'm not sure if I can actually want, want to cut into them because they look so pretty. Cakes. So what has been your career, what has been your key motivator for getting into this line of business? I think it's a number of things. Um, I've always, you know, been in the kitchen watching both my parents, you know, my mom would be more of the baker and my dad would be more of, you know, the chef in terms of, he would do all the local dishes. Right, right. Whereas my mom would do more British dishes and she would be more in, you know, like a recipe. And my dad is just like, no, put in, have to put in your onion and your side when you're time and this and that or whatever. (laughs) I always enjoyed being in the kitchen. Okay. And I've always, from ever since I can remember, I love to scribble on, and that, you know, I, I remember distinctly being very small and scribbling on this piece of paper with a pen. And I thought it was amazing. Gave it to my mom, like, mom, look what I did for you. <laughs> you know, um, always loved my art classes or my craft classes when we had different, you know, Mother's Day or Father's Day, Christmas yeah. kind of thing. We always had to do some kind of cards or some kind of little art project going into Christ the King same kind of thing you know art was actually a subject and yeah I just kind of more took to that side as opposed right. to the book art but we spoke off um, we spoke off air and um, one of the things you said to me before was that you didn't actually that wasn't your first career choice so how did you fall how did I say fall but how did you progress out of corporate life 
into mm -hmm. into bake into baking well you know even before i started working yeah uh, i wanted to do cakes and um you know i came straight out of christ the king went straight to, to college in miami yeah. still had no idea what i wanted to do and i just kind of came back and i worked you know at a sports betting company which was you know the thing to do yeah. because it was good money and whatever but i just kind of always felt like i had reached my limit in that like i just needed right. to do more yeah it was just became monotonous yes and um but before I had gone to college, I really wanted to do cakes. And it was just because I had, I had watched a, a TV program called Death by Chocolate one time, and I saw them pulling sugar and stuff like that, and I thought it was so amazing. And I wanted to try it, and of course, no, I couldn't try it. It was hot sugar, and I had experienced yeah. hot sugar <laughs> burns before. And <laughs> it's like my mom was making creme caramel once, and she poured the caramel in the bottom. Right. But the ramekin, she's like, Danielle, don't touch it. And as soon as she turned her head, I... As soon as you say, yeah, don't touch, gonna touch. Oh, and it, it really did hurt. <laughs> so, um, I spoke to a friend of mine's mother who did cakes. Right. And, Right then and there, she was like, don't even waste your time. Antigua people don't like to pay for those kind of things because it's not appreciated. Right. And, you know, then I had to face my dad with the whole, I don't want my daughter in the kitchen straight like that. Right, right. I don't want, to work. I don't want you working in the kitchen that, you know. So I continued working at a sports book for a while. And um, I changed sports books. And I started to see these... Um, well, I started to explore the idea of cooking more. And my mom right. kept telling me about um, Le Cordon Bleu. And we went to England, we checked it out, and I, I decided not to do that. But then I saw an advert for Le Cordon Bleu in Miami. Right. They, they ad, they, in the advert, they had cakes in there. So I was like, that is what I want to do. Because I had seen some of the cake shows and so on, and I thought, I really, I think that is so right. cool. I went for the interview. I decided to go eventually and I realized that they didn't really focus on the cake stuff. They focused more on like the pastries and, you know, things like croissants and of pastry and breads and, you know, like plating desserts and things like right. that or like in style cakes. And that's just really not what I had in my mind because yes, I can be, I like to look for shortcuts too, right? So the thought of me making a hundred plated desserts does not thrill me. Right, right. At all. <laughs> um, so I just thought, you know, making one cake with lots of nice decorations okay. would be something that I would like to do. Excellent, excellent. So I just, I ended, I had to do an internship. And I, from the beginning, I had to choose somewhere. And I found a place in Ha'elia <clears throat> who did amazing cakes. Right. It was exactly what I wanted to do. And I went. I did it. She took me on as her last intern. She said, I had the last intern that I had. I promised myself I was not going to take on anymore. But you seem passionate, so I'm going to take you on. And she actually ended up mentioning a couple of times that she would love to hire me. Right. But because, you know, of uh, visa issues and so on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It wouldn't have worked. So I just came, I learned the basic stuff yes. and I came and said, okay, well, you don't waste off your parents' money. <laughs> so you have to do it. And I basically dived in it head first. I knew nothing about the decorating. Like when I say I knew nothing, I never had the opportunity to decorate like a, a big cake or anything. Right. I, was trained more like the buttercream, the you know, like yeah, the crumb, yeah. the crumb coats and covering with fondant. And that was basically it, making little basic things here and there. But all the sugar flowers I taught myself, <laughs> YouTube became my friend. I eventually found some, you know, other tutorials that I purchased and so on. And I just, I just figured it was something that I could express my art right. side and my love for baking as well. Excellent. So, so in your, so in your, in, in, in the process of building your business, what's been the most satisfying challenge you've had to overcome in actually building it? 
I would say winning the appreciation or the acceptance of right. a lot of people that I don't think would have necessarily right. thought right. of before yeah. Yeah. in Antigua. Because I think we still are at a level where we just like cake. We're very traditional. Yeah, very yeah. traditional. Yeah. You know, so the... Fruit cake, rum cake, and that's it. Black cake. <laughs> exactly. You know, cake, it's just a cake. Yeah. But I actually saw a, cake, a shirt in at a, a cake expo that said, it's it's more than just cake. And I'm like, oh God, give that to me. And I wear it all the time. <laughs> I wear it all the time because it's true. There is cake. Yeah. And there is more than just a cake. Right. And that is what I pride myself in. Excellent. Right. And we were talking again off air about um, confidence and the mm -hmm. challenges around confidence. Now, some of us are known for maybe even self-sabotaging and undermining our own abilities. So how do you navigate your own personal confidence issues and kind of get out of that cycle? I, th I mean, I think self-confidence, as we even said earlier, there's different levels of confidence yes. and confidence in different areas and so on. And it's so funny because um, at one point in my life, I suffered a lot with anxiety. Right. And I had dealt with a situation which brought on this anxiety that, okay. you know, I did end up seeing a psychiatrist about. And oh. when I finally decided to do this, yes. he looked at me and he said, how funny that you, you of all people would choose a career that directly puts you out there in the public eye to yes. be criticized. And I thought about it and I was like, well, I may have my own self-confidence issues mm -hmm. in terms of me as a person or my looks or whatever. But I think this is something that has allowed me to kind of shine in a way where I might suppress in other ways. Yes. Right. right. So, it is a part of my creative side where I still don't like to work in front of people. Like I can't work properly if people are watching. Okay. Okay. Um, but it kind of, I'm giving you a piece of me when I give you my cake, like I'm giving you a piece of my creativity or yeah. my, my hand, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. And even though sometimes I might look at a cake that I've done, and I think, oh, you could have done better than that. You know, especially when you have a customer that is so particular and you're like, oh my God, <laughs> is it going to be up to their expectation? And then you deliver the cake and they're like, oh my God, thank yeah. you so much. And it's like, whew, phew. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. okay. You know, and it, it, it makes you, I mean, it makes you happy, obviously, but it, it gives you a little reassurance that, yeah. Yeah. You do your thing. Yeah. Like it's about working on working on your self belief, just making sure you you, are, yes. you you believe in you, which is often um, a challenge for 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 many of us. And again, at different times, and like you say, depending on what areas we're at, we're actually looking we're actually looking at. So so if you so Danielle, if you could go back and change one thing, what would it be and why? I really don't think I would change anything apart from maybe the age that I finally decided to do something. Okay. Okay. And then even saying that, I don't think so either because I think the age that I did go, I was definitely a little more mature. Right. Um, I don't think I would really change anything okay. because I think everything that I've gone through in my life yes. has helped me learn some important lesson that I needed for the other thing. Right. 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 So I really don't think I would change. And trust me, I've made, plenty mistakes in my life <laughs> you know but I honestly as as much as sometimes I'd like to regret certain things yeah I learned so much from that and that's the case you know, um, situation that I would never change it because yeah. <clears throat> I really think I've become a better person each time excellent you know and that is my goal yeah. I don't want to ever regress. I want to always progress. Fantastic. Fantastic. So, and that's, and that's the key. It's actually learning from it because like you say, if we don't if we keep making the same mistakes, then we don't deserve to progress. You know, we need to learn from it. 
So Danielle, share with us a success quote or mantra that you use and why it's meaningful to you. I would say teamwork makes the dream work. Oh, the good, because the good one. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think it's just so relevant, especially in such a small country. Yeah. Um, it makes, to me, <clears throat> it makes more sense to, I mean, no, I don't have anyone working for me. Right. I do work for myself, but I think if we all really kind of worked together in this industry, you know, we kind of, we can clap hands with each other. Mm-hmm. You know, as a DJ, you as a floral um, florist, you as a, a wedding planner, mm. you know, you as a caterer, I'm not going to kill myself to try and, you know, load down my head with catering yes. plus uh, wedding planning. You know, there's so many different aspects of an event, uh, which is the uh, industry that I'm in that it's not going to take anything off of me to say, okay, well, I have a, a DJ friend yeah. um, that I will recommend you to, or I have a florist that I can recommend you to, or I have a cake person that I can recommend you to. Um, we all can eat. Yes. You know, if we all work together yeah. instead of trying, we just have such a horrible thing in Antigua, this crab in a barrel syndrome, which is, I really would love for us to get out of that whole mind frame because yeah. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be successful by taking money out of your pocket. Right. You know, um, and I just believe in the whole, you cannot expect positivity from any kind of negativity. Yes. Yeah. So I'm not going to try and like downplay this person or whatever, just so that I can yeah. make a couple extra dollars. Um, but definitely if we all worked as a team, I think we could be so much more successful Excellent. in our Excellent. own small businesses Excellent. in Antigua. <laughs> definitely. So we Originally. Do. definitely the team weren't making the dream work. Yeah. So, so Danielle, what has been a book that has influenced you through your career journey and, um, why have you chosen it and what would have been, what would have been your learning? Okay. I'm not going to feel so self-conscious answer this because i'm going to admit to you i'm not a big person that's great some and people are some probably why i do cakes <laughs> <laughs> so, um maybe if i was a, a bigger fan of reading i probably would have made an amazing lawyer but as i read before in yeah. celestine prophecy um nothing happens by Nothing's coincidental. Yeah. Everything is for a reason. Yeah. So this might not be my calling as a a cake decorator, Mm -hmm. but I do think that I will, I would like to create a platform for myself. Right. Of influential stature that I could then maybe answer my calling, whatever that might be, whether, you know, uh, in some kind of charity or some kind of, I don't want to say politics because I think I would lose my mind, but I do love <laughs> politics. So. <laughs> you, know, you never know. I would love to influence younger people. So um, I would say the Celestine prophecy with the whole thing. The whole idea of the book is that nothing happens. Right. Like, right. Even if I'm passing you on the side of the road and I make eye contact with you, there must yeah. be some kind Reasonable. of message that I need to get from yeah. you. Yeah, I so, believe in that. <laughs> so, so you see, so you see, you you're not a broad reader. So, how do you get your inspiration for creating your cakes? Pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I really, I like in, uh, looking at pictures. I follow a lot of people on Instagram who right. I would like to aspire to be like. Excellent. So yeah. I look at their detail. I look at. Um, different techniques that they might have used. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's just for like my career. Yeah. For me personally, if I do read, I like to read things about Antigua okay. um, and the Caribbean. And so like one of, you know, one of the books that I read, you know, like Caribbean time bomb, there's Antigua for Antiguans. Yeah. Um, there's a couple more that I have to read as well, but 
I kind of like that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm not like someone to just pick up and read a, a random novel or anything right, like that. Right, right, right. So, so if you could, Daniel, if you could choose your own mentor, who would it be and why? <sighs> cake related or Whatever, just in life? Whoever, whoever it is in life. It could be life, it could be cake. It's entirely up to you. Who would it be? You've got one. One person you can choose for your mentor. <laughs> um, I think I don't want to say either one of my parents because I don't want to, you know, pick a side or anything. <laughs> so I'll just go completely off. <laughs> And I would just give an example of two people in the cake industry that I okay. would choose from. Okay. And two people that I really look up to would be Yolanda Gamp and Liz Merrick. Right. And I have been recognized by both okay. and they are world renowned cake decorators. So that in itself is cool. But I would definitely say I would, I would more identify and like to look up to Liz Merrick okay. in mostly because I just recently interacted with her on a personal level. Okay. And I thought that was really cool of her that although she has all these followers and all this fame yeah. or whatever, you she's still that. down there, like right. down to earth yeah. and doesn't think she's better or too good to answer, you know, someone that yeah. is in her group or something like that. Cause I, I don't, I might not, I might not like to, uh, tutor somebody or teach someone how to make anything uh, cake related one on one just because I don't have yeah. the patience. Yeah. But several times I've been asked questions and I've never, like, I just had some, a client that I did cupcakes for the other day and she's like, Daniel, you know, I usually. I usually bake for my my kids myself. Mm -hmm. um, but for some reason, I'm not a big, I'm not a, like a the best baker in the world, but my cakes always burn. So I was like, what temperature are you baking? Like 375. I'm like, oh, well, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah I good don't mind offering yeah. advice or things right. like that. You know, right. I still want to be able to, you know, help someone without having to like teach them one-on-one. -on -one. Cause I, I think I'm, I don't one I don't have the patience for it. And I'm, I'm a bit shy. Right, right, right. And I guess the confidence level as well. Like, yeah. I really know enough to teach anybody. You know. We always know enough to teach somebody. We always know enough. Because there's all, obviously, yeah, yeah, we, we always know enough. People have different, different learning gaps, different right. learning gaps. So, Danielle, what would you say are the three things you've learned about yourself during your career? Um... Well, I've definitely learned how to be an adult. <laughs> That's a very useful skill to have. Yes, it is. Because, um, you know, just in dealing with uh, situations on a more mature level, um, just controlling maybe like an off situation where if you weren't at that mature level, you might end up saying yeah. some things that you regret or yeah, yeah. handling the whole situation terribly. Yes. Um, I've learned that I can run with no sleep for a few days at a time. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, what would be a third thing? That although I've come very close to giving up, right. Um, I do have that little extra thing inside that just says, don't okay. you dare. Okay. Um, and I've come very close to giving up on a couple of things, uh, a couple of cakes, <laughs> um, before. And I'm so glad that I didn't give up because I, those were actually some of my proudest moments. So what pushes you at those moments? What takes, what, what stops you and says, don't do it. Carry on, Danielle, push through. What stops you? 
Um, what else may I do? I'm just turn 35. <laughs> I don't have the discipline to learn, like to have, um, do online courses. I would never dream of asking my parents to send me back to school. Um, But because I've come so far in creating a name for myself. Yes. And because I've come so far in developing my skills that I I would have never thought uh, 10 years ago that I was able to create some of these things that I've done before. I actually would have never thought that I would have even thought to do that <laughs> right, right right um maybe like 20 years ago so um well i guess i could say a, another thing that i learned is that when you reach uh another level yeah you still have more levels to reach yes. after that yes yes so it's yeah. an ongoing process yeah yeah um, the whole key for me is about evolving and keep on learning because you, you, you exactly you, you always always there's always room for improvement they say always absolutely improvement. so Danielle last couple of questions what's your definition of success well um, I I'm gonna say that I don't think I've reached the level of success that I would like to reach yet. Excellent. And I would, I would still, and again, like I just said too, I don't think, I think even when I reach to a level of success, yeah. I'm still going to think, okay, well, this is just another stepping stone to the next level, something more. Yeah. Um, but as of right now, I mean, creating a name for myself, I think, um, in, an industry where people do more often than not say it's just cake. Yeah. (laughs) You know? Um, So when I have people that do rally behind me and say, no, it's not, it's not just cake, you know, like (laughs) paying for the, look at, look at the quality, (laughs) you know? Um, But I think the best part about the whole thing is when, you hand over a cake that you've just finished. Yes. And someone is almost about to break down into tears or actually right. does start crying. It's like, yeah. I can't believe it. Thank you so much. Like that, the feeling that you get, right. you can't even explain it. Because yeah. like I said earlier too, yeah. you're actually, when you sing or when you create a, a piece of art or anything, you're actually give, I to me, I feel as though you're giving somebody a part of yourself yeah that you cannot express otherwise yes yeah you know so you feel very humble and you feel so appreciative that yeah. you could have evoked that you know like you can tell yeah. good music yeah, yeah. Like if yes. music yes. can actually give you yeah yeah it's a good song or you know you can sing when you can make somebody yeah. cry yeah kind of a thing so it's the same kind of feeling. And I, I would even say like a singer yeah. would probably have that same humbling feeling yeah. Yeah. when somebody does, you know, burst into tears. Yeah. Yeah. But genuinely, I don't mean like, you know, starstruck people that are like, oh my God, you know. But it's the like, emotion because, because I think it's the emotion because you managed to create the vision that they right. And that is definitely a skill. But it's yeah. Definitely- definitely definitely a skill so I think that's where the emotion comes from because you know they have it in their mind's eye but it's not until they actually see it and then it's maybe surpassed what they thought right that's where the, that's where the emotion comes from so that that is a beautiful skill to have Danielle to evoke that with cake yes <laughs> just cake. With cake. I'm not going to say just cake because there's right. more than that as you said you put you yes, put sure. a piece of you into every actual signature you put a piece of you into each of those. Yeah. So lastly, Danielle, what does it mean to you to be your own hero? You know, I reviewed these questions, I'm not going to lie. And that one still kind of got me because I guess the confidence struggle also has me struggling to think, well, am I am I a hero? You know, what is, what is even my definition of a hero kind of a thing? Um, 
but I would say if I was a if I had a daughter, yes, I would hope that my daughter would look up to me as you know a good example of someone who you know has either be put down or um you know, had their confidence shot at some point in their life or that there are more things to life than just, you know, your appearances or how other people perceive you on a social level or something like that. But to just look beyond certain things and um, make something of yourself in a positive way that can somehow positively affect someone else. Okay. So like when I get, uh, I get messages sometimes from young girls who, you know, either want me to teach them or something. And I feel bad sometimes to say, no, I really don't yeah. uh, do that just because I, not that I don't want to teach you. It's just that I don't have that skill. Right. Uh, So, but it's very flattering to know that a young girl would look up to me and say, I love what you do. I would love to learn what you do. Um, And I would even have the confidence in you to teach me kind of a thing. Or I would look to you to teach me. So I think that is uh, a humbling feeling. And I don't think heroes should forget that their purpose is for others to look up to them and not to just become successful and then just be like, yeah, you little peasants can, you know, <laughs> like <laughs> run along, but more to embrace them. And, Excellent. you know, it, it is, I don't think even if I was to become like a huge millionaire that I would ever change the person that I am. Yeah. Yeah. And, and maybe, a slight lack of confidence will always help me stay grounded. Stay grounded, stay grounded, stay grounded. So, so finally, that was my last question, Danielle. So if people want to get hold of you or want to see your fantastic cakes, um, how can they do that? They can either send me an email. Okay. Um, at DanielleGeorgeJohn at, at gmail.com. Okay. Um, they can Facebook message me either on my personal page or on my uh, business page. Okay. Which is just either Danielle George John or Dan's Sweet Dreams. Um, and that's Dan, and then Dan, Dan they can also the con- Dan, Yes. Dan with a Z. And then, uh, yes, Dan's with a Z. And my website is dansweetdreams.com. Um, Excellent. And then for more pictures, they can just look at my Instagram, which is just Sweet Dreams A N U. Excellent. And I'll put all the links to all those sites in the in the show notes as well. So all that remains to be said, Danielle, is thank you so much for your time. I aspire to actually try one of your cakes because I've not. I don't think I've tasted one yet. I've seen lots of pictures, um, but I, de- <laughs> I, I, I definitely aspire. So thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. So I hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Phenomenal Woman. And as ever, it's my pleasure to show up here every week and connect with like-minded women who want to live their life to its fullest and be empowered to take their career to the next level. I hope you've enjoyed this edition of Phenomenal Woman and I know you've definitely loved it. So please, please, please share this on all your social media networks, Facebook, Instagram, and let all the other phenomenal women that you know share in what you're hearing. You can connect with me and join the conversation via JanniceSutherland.com. And on Facebook and Instagram, I am down as I am Janice Sutherland and links are in the show notes. So remember, you are the author of your own story. You control the narrative and you have the power to give your life story a happy ending. So own it. Until next time, I look forward to connecting with you.